Hello everyone. Hey, thank you for coming to my channel today and um, I hope you will try to paint along this uh, Black Eye Susan um, with the water droplets and um, it is very very fun and I am very happy that we have the chance to do that because I did promise the water droplet when I was doing the process of art making it with the tulips and so um, and I didn't do it with the tulip so I decided to do um, a different flower and this flower turned out to be very happy and very much um, uh, what I um, intended for it to do and I'm very grateful that you guys uh, come and watch it and so uh, I will have the list of what the color that I use uh, the brand and uh, also um, as you watch you will see um, the brushes that I use is uh, mainly just my a standard and my favorite the either the flow uh, this one is um, this one is a big brush with a big belly I've talked about that before and my happy dots we use that too and then these two two detail brush uh, number zero and number two from uh, Princeton and they are very good um, because that's what we use and you see that as you paint uh, or watch it with me okay and I did some dropping dropping of this um, uh, of this uh, of this color splashing I guess of the color on there and uh, I just wanted to point out a couple of things um, I added a little bit of uh, um, uh, of uh, flowers in the back because I know that with uh, black eye Susan bushes they usually are quite full and uh, so you should be able to see a lot and so if you like to you can just uh, get carried away and uh, put even more okay so all you have to do is uh, something to suggest the center and something to suggest the pedal okay and um, one important thing that I also have added of course I have done the background I leave you guys I left you guys uh, in the <coughs> beginning of doing the background because I have talked about how a green color uh, or blue color is the best way to bring out the yellow the beautiful yellow and burnt orange color and so um, just the flower alone by itself um, uh, nothing compared to putting you know some of the background there and which is very true in you know in my humble opinion and uh, also um, I forgot to put this shadow on the water droplet so I added that and also I added the little line because the vein as the vein go through the water droplet it is supposed to change in value right and you're supposed to still see the vein through the water droplet because it's nothing but a glass and we talk about that in our dragonfly uh, because underneath the dragonfly you can still see the color and sometimes the shape of things too so and I really like that the water droplet turned out to be really well and uh, I will show you step by step if you follow me to paint along okay and uh, so this uh, painting turned out to be a very a very happy painting and um, I hope you guys have fun and don't forget uh, to please uh, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to me it makes me very happy and it also makes me very happy to see your work and also to hear from you um, it's up to you if you wanted to do that I would love to and I will try my best to answer uh, any question that you have and um, so uh, let's not talk anymore and we get started with the painting unless there's something else I think I uh, included everything that is um, that I wanted to talk to you guys about okay and so have fun okay we will have fun with this one I think you will love it okay I think we should get started and so today I'm going to debate between using the uh, my happy dot or the flow brush the flow brush um, pick up uh, a little bit less water so I'm gonna start with that and if I don't like it then I'll go to a brush that has more um, water capacity and so we're gonna start with the leaf first and so that we can um, give it a chance to dry out a little bit before we do the water droplet on it okay so um, as with um, if you observe uh, carefully um, what I'm picking up this is uh, mainly uh, quite a dense pigment of the uh, perlene green and this is from Shimenka and so this is uh, one of my you know I, I'm starting on the edge one of my uh, you know happy green mix 
that I do. Okay, and now I'm going to go in with uh, some sap green and to kind of lighten it and just kind of pull the color out a little bit. You know, I can tell uh, at this moment and now I'm cleaning my brush and try to pull out the the sap green, okay? And, uh, so that I would, um, you know, the color, uh, you know, they have variation in it, not as intense, okay? And uh, try not to, you know, um, be too, um, what's the word for it, uh, uh, mess with it too much. Okay, and I'm going to, I know that there's a center vein, a center vein to the, um, to the leaves of the, to this leaf of the, um, uh, to the leaves of the, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, Black Eyed Susan, so I needed to do that. I'm just focusing and thinking about it because what I'm doing is I, I have a little water droplet uh, circle that I have. Uh, drawn there and so what I'm doing is I am uh, trying to uh, get around it um, you know so that I will reserve that spot and we'll talk about water droplet as we get closer to it okay and that, uh, there's also other veins so I'm going to do another vein over there and so what I'm doing is I'm picking up this perline green which I choose uh, to be the little bit of a darker green Oh, okay, it won't pick up. Maybe I think my brush is uh, too wet. And so I'm drying it and then I go in and pick up um, that I choose that to uh, be the vein. And this is the way I like to do it because I try a different way. I have my practice, but it's not like right here in front of me. So I can't show you. I try like three ways, three ways of um, doing it. And I like this way the best is to um, just uh, have the darker color right in the vein area right away and then I pull it out with a lighter color. I uh, tend to think that that is kind of pretty if I may say so. And so if it is not as intense as I want it, I can come back in to the edge, you know, and just kind of drop in the more intense color. I hope you guys can see it well. You know, I know I've been, uh, I'm not very good <laughs> with uh, um, with technology okay so I'm using a camcorder and my husband said you know told me he, he said now I'm uh, what I did is I use a light wash okay uh, if you can see that light wash wash of sap green and now fill in the area in between the two veins okay now I'm missing one vein over here so I'm going to do it now because I'm just not too worried you know, sometimes you might want to, if you are worried about, um, uh, you know, um, controlling the water, then you might want to make sure that it's dry, but I am not because, um, you know, I want it to be a, not too sharp of a line. Now I leave a little white there because that's just my uh, habit of being, um, you know, my discipline of uh, the Chinese painting. So, but I'm not going to leave any white because I want the, to have the droplet, the water droplet to be the one that's the whitest, okay? So I'm going to try to go faster, um, but you don't, you know, you can just uh, kind of slow down, okay? Because I have, let's see, one, two, three, three leaves and some background leaves that I wanted to do and to get it all ready for, um, now I'm looking uh, to get all ready for the water droplet. And so I'm, uh, you know, trying to keep keep a keep, uh, good time, you know, and so that I, you know, because, um, you know, last time I upload my, the process, the iris, the, is it iris? Yeah, the iris of the process of, um, okay, so I just put a, a kind of um, uh, uh, intense wash of the perline green, okay, and then straight away. So I come in with my sap green. So actually, with you watching me, you'll be able to see me uh, do one, two, three, three of the big leaves, okay. And so that will be good, you know. And oh, I was talking about. I'm so sorry. I was talking to you about the, you know, that I hope you can see because um, what I'm doing is I ha I have my I have a camcorder that I I find out that. You know, my husband's research that uh, that probably is the best way to uh, use for filming. 
and uh, instead of camera because it doesn't focus on the moving or one object it actually uh, focus on a lot um, and so that's like kind of nice you know and so but he say that you know so this is something that I learned right that's uh, now that's the center line okay and that's the perlene green and now I'm going to come in with some sap green you know the same way you know just to pull the color out so it's not so intense but I'm also be careful not to um, like kind of mute the line so much that you don't see it anymore and so my husband told me digital uh, no optical swim is good okay it will still preserve the crispness crispness uh, crisp sorry crispness okay of the image of or the video that i make but if i use the um digital zoom then i will lose the the uh, freshness and it will be a little bit um you know fussier so he's just uh you know that is his point of uh telling me what I needed to uh, be careful when I film and so I hope that I am using uh, I am actually zoom in but I hope that I'm using the right zoom <laughs> I'm learning all these things you know I am just an artist not just an artist but I'm just an artist usually I don't um, pay attention to you know um, te uh, you know uh, electronics but now I know that I have to okay this seems a little bit of uh, fuzzy to me and so but that's okay and I'm going to come in and do my uh, third vein third veins because um, I know that that's uh, you know how the um, black eye Susan's leaf look like okay so I'm just uh, need to be true to the you know to nature um, but then right here that is uh, you can see that I'm leaving another uh, area for another water droplet okay and uh, so I'm quite happy with how the two leaves turn out okay I'm just uh, coming in and adding a little bit of sap green to make the green a little bit more intense now I am intentionally <coughs> leaving the um, the leaves to be a little lighter than nature because of the water droplet and I'll tell you that in a minute okay now so I have another leaves over there over here that I need to you know so I will show you guys okay now um, you will think that the, the black eye Susan is the is the star of the show Um I don't intend for it to be I intend for the leaves to be the star of the show because uh, uh, well not the leaves the water droplet actually to be the star of the show because um, you know I've been practicing and I think for this one I actually practiced a few times at first I thought okay I will just uh, do the black eye Susan and have a lot of water droplet okay and so um, you know I use my family as my guinea pig I don't tell them my preference or anything I just um, invite them in and my daughter and my husband and say hey you know what do you think about that and I already um, I have a preconceived uh, notion that it was now this is the center vein again okay now here's the perlene green and so it's a darker green okay and so um, in order you know to, for me to make sure that um, you know because perlene green uh, is a um, what you call that is a sedimentary color that means there's a lot of sediment in it and so what I usually do is I will try to go fast okay I try to go fast and uh, try to uh, soften it as fast that I, as I could okay and if I make a mistake then I also need to go fast and correct it okay and that's how I deal with sedimentary color because um, you know I think that once they settle in they settle down and um, like if you like for example I'm painting this and I go on to a different part of the painting and then I come back what the problem is um, with the sedimentary color sometimes you have to, uh, we have to get to know our color right sometimes the color will just um, just stay there and it won't move and no matter how much uh, you try to move it and so since my training is really the Chinese watercolor I you know I don't really um, I try to uh, fix things or make sure that things are right you know or fix the painting or whatever the watercolor situation before it has a chance to just sit there 
and like I say, settle down and be happy and never want to leave again. Sometimes the color do that. <laughs> you know, I know that um, I kind of want to mention this, you know, because, um, you know, as we go on with uh, with uh, the years, you know, things change. And I know that uh, 15, 20 years ago, the watercolorists like to wait until things are dry and they scrub things out, you know. Now, I, I have never really been the artist that do that kind of, you know, not that kind of practice because of my Asian training. You know, I usually is the one that you do one stroke and then you will be done you know, and uh, or uh, not one stroke or as as best as you can do not uh, try to come back and fix things later. OK, and so you don't do you don't see me doing a lot of scrubbing ever, you know, with my things, you know, because I like to I think it is more crisp. It preserves the crispness of the watercolor and I really like that. And so that is uh, one of my preference. OK, and so um, you know, I I don't recommend coming back to scrub things, you know, and play because watercolor is really okay. Now this is an indigo, you know, and that I just put in there because that is the stem, the stem of the. Uh, I just decide for some reason to do it, okay, and I come in with a little bit of sap green to pull the color out a little bit now so that you can see where I you know I'm thinking I will put the stem in later okay now these three these three leaves are uh, now I'm just giving it a chance to just uh, just rest and uh, dry and so when I come in um, hopefully uh, that is when I will get the sediment tree color working for me right because I want it to stay when I come in and do the um, do the water droplet okay and so I was practicing that and using my family as a guinea pig to tell me, you know, how they feel about what I did. And I finally, you know, with all of their, uh, with all of their um, uh, opinion, <laughs> and of course, sometimes I take it and sometimes I don't. And uh, they will, uh, I have a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do. And so, but um, I try and I think the water droplet. That is the main thing because I have promised you guys uh, when I was doing the, I think the, uh, uh, what was the, 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 um, the flower, uh, you know, my brain is not working as sharp. I didn't have a good night's sleep uh, when I was doing the, uh, the tulips, you know, that I say that I will do the water droplet and do that with you guys. Okay. And so I have one for the flower and and then I have one, two, three, four, and then you'll be able to see that in a minute. Okay. Now, so we are now letting the green dry, and so let's uh, work on our um, uh, work on our black eye Susan. Okay. Now, um, so what I'm going to do is the same brush. I think this is enough of a belly of water, and I'm going to go into my paint gray. Okay. Now I am also one. I am very very intense. Okay, the color I'm picking up is a lot of uh, a lot of pigment. Okay, I'm doing a very very intense of color. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here. I know that with um, with uh, with uh, Black Eye Susan, not they not only have. Um, in the middle okay so you can see that the paint gray is so dark that they are it almost look black okay and uh, don't worry about it okay we're going to it, it will look good okay it will look good but also i realized that um uh if you look carefully the middle part actually has some uh really beautiful um now the color is losing uh, it's going uh, more dilute right as i as i go um, and the middle part is very pretty. It also has some uh, purple in it. So I'm going to, I've decided to use the dioxazine, not the middle part, actually the part that is uh, facing the sun, okay? Um, and so now what I'm doing is I clean the brush up and I'm pulling this color out, okay? So that it become a little less intense, okay? Now, but the problem is I also see some, um, <laughs> I also see some, uh, uh, uh burnt umber in it okay a little bit of brown so even though i you know you know i i, I um you know this uh having so many color in the middle but i know that i need to do it true and do it right okay and so i'm going to drop a drop of burnt umber 
here and there okay so that's what you see okay and now i'm further is i'm further diluting it okay so there's just a little bit of a spot left and i'm gonna let that dry and when that is uh, pretty much dry then i will come in and um drop in the dioxazine uh, purple which is a bluish purple okay and that's what i wanted to do now i'm doing the same thing over here okay i'm uh, using a quite a thick um pigment going in the middle because this uh, is my value, right? I wanted the value to be, you know, when there's chance to do dark things, it's very happy because the dark will give the contrast. And as we paint, you will see that it's very nice because uh, we need the contrast to the yellow leaf and it looks very pretty. Okay, so that's about um, the amount that I wanted to uh, use, okay? And also give us the pretty form, right? The form of the, you know, of that little inside. It almost looked like a gum drop, I think. You know, as I was, I was making decision, okay? So the decision was that I wanted to do some, um, I wanted to do water droplet, okay? This uh, painting, but then I was thinking about what, um, you know, what flower should I do it with? What flower should I do it with? And I saw um, a picture uh, in Pinterest that it was marigold. And I say, well, I don't want to copy exactly what they do. So I, I pick in a yellow flower and I uh, did a lot of the water droplet. Okay, it's the same process. This little area that I'm leaving kind of white, I will let them dry and then I'll come in and uh, drop in the, uh, the blue purple. Okay, now we are, this is a bud. This is a bud. So let me... Um, you know, I have reference pictures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a wash of um, a kind of like a lighter yellow, okay? A cadmium yellow light, okay? And so you see that I loaded my brush with uh, a lot of cadmium yellow light, okay? Right over here. It's quite intense, okay? And so I'm going to do this because I wanted to have one, two, and then, you know, I don't want to, you know, spend a lot of time doing... Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, doing um, the flower, okay? But then I know that we need a certain flower. I'm leaving some a little bit of highlight. You can see that over there, right? Okay, now so I'm going to let that cadmium dry, that cadmium yellow uh, light dry, which is my happy color. And then I'll go on to the other things, okay? Now, I'm pretty sure that my uh, green is very much dry, okay? But before we go on to the droplet, let's take a little time and I'm going to uh, do the petals of the of the um, uh, of the flower okay so we're not going to you know I you might find that my speed might be a little bit faster but you guys can always slow down okay and don't worry about me <laughs> that's what I mean okay now so I'm using there's a lot of yellow so I'm using cadmium yellow medium I just loaded my brush okay uh, my uh, cadmium sorry <laughs> the cadmium yellow medium okay it's quite pasty okay and then i will um start doing the petals over here okay now let's do this one first since uh okay my chair is uh, being a little bit squeaky today okay so not much to it we'll just follow the shape which you guys uh, will be able to you know i have a drawing for you i actually draw directly onto my watercolor paper sometimes i do that sometimes i don't you know, it all depends. I think it's if it is a flower that is quite easy to me, I'll do that. Now I clean my brush and I'm going to go to the cadmium yellow light. Okay, it's a little bit lighter, but you can hardly tell the difference, especially, you know, on screen. Okay, now I do leave a little bit of the highlight there because that's just the way I am. Okay, I'm going to go in with a quinacridone gold, okay? which is uh, also a little bit darker. Can you see that? I just uh, drop in a little bit of color over here because I wanted the form. I wanted you to see that this part of the petal is darker and I come over here and it's lighter, okay? So that's why the different color. Okay, and so now I say that that is enough, you know, for it to kind of mingle over there. And when it get dry, then we will uh, actually use some quinacridone burn orange, okay? A very nice mix of yellow okay and so let's do this one okay and I do I, I, I like to leave a little bit of uh, of a white there okay and then I clean my brush clean it 
<laughs> I, I always find where is the camera viewfinder. Okay, right there. Okay, and then the I mean the camcorder, and then I I use this part. Uh, this part is actually cadmium yellow light. But if you don't have that, I'm just a little bit uh, fussy. I can see that there's two different color. I don't know if uh, in the camera that you can see that. Okay, now coming in with the quinacridone burn orange. Okay, and so the leaf will look like it's uh, darker over here, lighter. You know, so it has a little bit of a rolling effect, okay? And I like to do that with uh, not the leaf, the petals, okay? Now, um, I try to skip around because I think that uh, it might be better for you if you're following me to um, be able to let them dry a little bit before you go in with, you know, so many different layers. Now, we're back to the cadmium yellow medium, okay? And try to do this part and then where, you know, this is where I like to leave just a little bit of highlight, okay? Because this part is facing towards the sun, you know, which is coming down that way, okay? And then uh, cadmium yellow medium, okay? Finish this part off, you know, so that's what we're doing with all the petal, okay? And then quinacridone, quinacridone gold. Um, you know, if you don't have it, you can use a, a darker yellow, a darker yellow, you know, to do that, okay? Um, if you only have one or two color, then a light, a light, uh, a lighter, um, I mean a medium, um, a medium, uh, a medium yellow, and then you go get go get yourself a lighter yellow, and that uh, truly is um, is quite enough. And then you can go get yourself an orange yellow, okay? An orange, an orangey yellow, which is uh, what I. Uh, it's either like kind of like burnt sienna or quinacridone burnt orange. I consider that, uh, you know, a lighter, uh, I mean a darker yellow, orange yellow, okay? Now I'm doing the same thing. I'm using my quinacridone gold, which is uh, almost as, uh, the price is as, uh, as expensive as gold. Actually, um, you can't even buy it now, nowadays, because, uh, you know, Daniel Smith, um, the beautiful quinacridone gold that they have to discontinue it, right? Okay, now I'm pulling uh, the cadmium yellow medium, okay? And then uh, this part that I'm leaving light, I will use the cadmium yellow light, okay? So uh, since we're doing the petal over and over again, I will just uh, do it kind of fastly, okay? And, uh, so that you know you you know what I'm doing, right? And then this one at the back, the back petal, uh, this is cadmium yellow medium again, okay? And I'll just kind of do this and let it let it kind of disappear in the back, okay? <clears throat> I'm trying to film in the morning, and today uh, we're actually raining, raining here in Utah. Back to cadmium yellow medium. Okay, it's raining here in Utah, so um, we are actually quite wet and dark outside, but, you know, the last few days has been very, very hot, and that's cadmium yellow light, okay? And uh, I don't know, maybe a, just a little drop of uh, the quinacridone gold, okay? And over here, I have a, uh, I have a little petal here. I'm just going to kind of suggest that. Just put a little bit of uh, color on it, just to suggest to people that is a, there is a, a petal that has rolled back, you know, to the back of this flower, right? And uh, I also, now I'm leaving this circle right here. I also um, wanted to take you guys to um, the LDS temple in American Fork when they're, when they're, um, when they're, uh, I will try to film over there and do the process of art making over there because uh, in the summertime, uh, through the past few years, okay, they are, they have um, this uh, beautiful black eyed Susan there. And so I hope they're planning the same thing. Sometimes, of course, they change their mind. I'm not in charge and they do whatever they want. And uh, I'm happy uh, if they do. And if they do, I will kind of reverse the order, do the process. Um, but I know that right now it's still considered late spring here. And so, okay, I have a little petal that's underneath here, okay? And so I'm using a little bit of cadmium medium, but what I'm going to do right now is go in and use more quinacridone gold, okay? Because that will kind of separate it. 
you know so you can see that those are not the same petal there's one petal here and one petal at the back okay so that's what I'm trying to accomplish and I'm just gonna leave that hole there what I'm going to do is like mingle the green color when we do the background that make it a little bit of stylishness to it okay now um, I think those are pretty much done for now okay and so let's work on these guys okay same thing cadmium medium Okay, with a drop of the light over here. Oh yeah, I changed my mind and my pedal is supposed to, uh, when I was drawing, <laughs> supposed to bend over there. And try to leave as little um, of a um, pencil mark as you can. Actually, I can actually erase more of this pencil mark. The reason why we wanted to do that is because um, we're using yellow color and the pencil mark underneath will show. And that doesn't bother me, but I'm afraid that it might bother bother some of you guys. And so, um, look at how good I am. I'm using my brush to get the eraser off, <laughs> the dust off. <laughs> okay, I'm not um, leaving because I'm not doing a, a water droplet on this flower particularly. Because uh, I wanted to show you how pretty the... Now back to cadmium yellow medium, okay? Now, if you are a more, um, you know, you don't worry about, uh, wow, it's still, the line is still kind of, kind of uh, strong to me, okay? So I'm trying to erase more because, um, you know, the yellow doesn't cover up the line very, very well. And, but if you are more like, um, you know, more, have more practice as an artist, sometimes you can just do this. You don't have to, uh, you know, clean the brush and come back, you know. So what I'm trying to say is I'm using a cadmium yellow medium, okay, right now. And instead of, um, let me pull this down a little bit so you can see that instead of uh, going in with the yellow, I can do two petals at least, okay. And then I go in with the cadmium yellow light, okay, and use that on both. I guess in this way you can actually save, um, save your pigment. But I think, um, you know, don't... Uh, worry about that too much. Uh, now this is our quinacridone uh, gold, okay? Come over here and darken some of the area. Now why is it that I say that you don't have to worry about doing that too much is because, um, you know, don't try to save the pigment and, uh, you know, make mistake, like allow the yellow to sit over here for too long and then, uh, and then the color doesn't mix. The, the medium and the light doesn't mix, okay? And that's not what you want it to do. But I'm just suggesting that if you guys are, are thinking, wow, Kathy has to go and rinse her brush <laughs> so often, okay, to, because that's just the two color. And I do. And I don't mind doing that, okay? Now, um, I think there's a pedal in the back. Yes, I'm looking at, am I looking at the picture? Is it the right picture? Okay, I think I move, okay. This is the right picture over here. Okay, there's a pedal right here. Okay, and I'm going to just uh, just uh, just use the one color, the medium. Okay, and just do that so you know that there's a pedal over here. Okay, and then there's one over here. And I had a little bit of yellow run into my black. I don't even worry. Okay, because in nature, you know, they do. Uh, they are kind of consistent. If the flower is yellow, it spreads everywhere. So. Um, uh, don't worry in this case. If there's a reason to worry, I'll tell you guys, okay? I'll make sure I point it out, but not in this case, okay? Now this quinacridone gold, I'm coming in because I want to separate this petal from that one, okay? So I do a little bit of that, and then you can already see that it's separated. And I think that it do it can take some intense color. Um, so if I remember, I will come in with the quinacridone gold, okay? Now, see what I'm doing? I'm using that little purple and just drop it. Uh, just uh, put it in this area, okay, right there, where the highlight, with the, you know, so it has the form of like a gum drop, okay? Okay, is that, isn't that pretty? Okay, that's actually quite pretty. Now I'm going to do that water droplet, okay? But as of right now, we, I think we're ready to start on the water droplet over here, okay? Let's start on this one. Now imagine the sun is coming this way, okay? The sunlight, uh, imagine, I mean, meaning that we are, 
pretending we are making up that up okay so we need to be consistent okay and then I will tell you why and how okay now so I'm using this these two finer brush right now okay I'm using this um, this uh, uh, my uh, Ciro Princeton run Aqua Elite and then I'm uh, using the number two also from the Jackson okay now so I'm uh, starting with the number two okay so what I'm doing is I'm coming in with the uh, perline green okay okay which is darker green I'm picking up uh, quite an intense pigment okay now since the sun is coming that way with a water droplet it actually will have a shadow right there Okay, it will have a little little bit of a shadow actually in the water droplet. So I'm actually kind of lucky today. Okay, now before that get very dry, I'm going in with my sap green. Now why am I lucky today? Because it's raining. And so I was able to, I just go out and look at the water droplet. And just to one last time make sure that I, I have all of my color and the shape correctly. And so there's a lot of water droplets. So I'm pulling the 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 color out okay with the sap green okay now before uh, we get it take away with us okay we need to clean the brush now so the brush now have no pigment and I'm pulling this out uh, even a little bit more okay and then for the droplet over here I'm leaving that this area as totally white okay well yeah uh huh okay now, I'm just going to leave it that way, okay, for now, okay? And let's work on this one. This one has a little bit of a fun shape. And so, since the sun is coming that way, we are doing the same way, okay? Um, we're doing this right here. It has a little bit of a little bit of a roundish, um, uh, of a roundish pointiness to it because I just wanted to, you know, do a little shape just for fun, okay? Now that's where the shadow is, okay? Now, before the perline green had a chance to dry, uh, because we don't want it to not be able to work on it, right? And so I'm coming in with the sap green, and the sap green is a little bit watery, so I don't like that, so I am going back in, okay? And pulling, now I'm pulling uh, the color out, um, out of the perline green okay I'm letting the two color mix but make sure that it's lighter over here and darker over there okay but don't have to worry though because we're gonna come in and do something else okay in a minute now now I'm going to clean my brush now this is a totally clean brush with no pigment okay and then you're pulling a little bit more of that color out okay and so this is really nice right now this part is actually kind of light of almost no color. We're going to leave that as that way, okay? Okay, now, uh, is that dry? That is dry, okay? So I'm going to come in and show you. Now I'm changing to my fine detail brush and I'm going in with uh, with actually the indigo. Indigo is actually um, darker in value than the perline green, okay? And I'm going to because the water droplet is sitting on the leaves and so it will cast a shadow over here. Okay, do you see that? I just round that corner. Maybe I'll zoom in just a little bit for you so you can see that a little bit better. Okay, I'm casting a shadow over here. You see that? Okay, and that is enough. Just a light strip of that. And then I'm with no pigment, a clean brush, I'm gonna pull this out. Just gently soften the line, okay? Isn't that pretty? Gently soften the line. And so now what's happening is you can see that it's like three dimensional, right? Isn't that pretty? Now um, we're not done, okay? So I'm going back into the, uh, to the indigo with my detail brush and I'm going to further darken this area. Okay, so I, it's the second layer. The first layer is perline green and this is indigo, okay? To make that, so it's, um, it's um, is a gradation of color okay so further darken that area okay isn't that you can already see that this droplet is sending uh, is uh, standing out uh, like I mean it stands out <laughs> it stands out okay now let's do this one because I know that the bottom is dry already okay and I'm taking my indigo color with also my small brush okay now and so this is how the shadow is being cast there should be a little bit of shadow over here 
a little more shadow over this side okay now be sure that you don't go over the edge of the leaves why is that because then there's no I mean uh, it's casting a shadow but it needs to be cast on something right and so don't let it cast a shadow on the atmosphere okay you can cast shadow on object but not the atmosphere right we, we know that if you go out and um, and so that is already a three-dimensional effect right and so I've decided that and so I'm picking up a little bit of indigo and I'm going back into this very dark area and darken it even more okay so and make that make the 3d effect and so and I will talk to you about the white in a minute okay let's do this one okay this is the last one on the leaves okay so I want you guys to see that and so what I'm going in is the same thing I'm going in with perlene green first okay and so the Sun is casting you know it's shining down that way okay so I'm going to let that oh I have this one that's dropping out I need to do that one too okay Okay, you see that? Okay, and then now I'm uh, pulling the leaves out. Ah, <laughs> the sap green is actually quite liquidy over there today. It's not cooperating, but I'm okay. I'm okay with it. We have to learn to be very patient to the watercolor because they are the one and the water, they are the stars, right? They're the pigment. And so we're just uh, trying our best to, you know, trying to make them follow along with us and that takes uh, many years of practice okay now so I'm uh, oh a drop just got in there okay not very prepared forgot to pull out my okay so I need to take that drop out okay a drop of water just drop in there I don't know if you guys can see that so I'm just saying that we need to take our time to um, Okay, make sure that just pull out the color, okay? Don't put any pigment on here. And then, um, okay, and then we'll just do this one. Okay, let's do this one. That's hanging, hanging itself. Um, oh, let me uh, turn this off and then I'll restart it just a second. I have to um, make my video into like a less than 30 minute segment because it's easier to upload on our cloud, to our cloud, okay? Now, so um, let's go in here. Let me talk to you about this first okay now this is the shadow okay this water droplet is actually hanging on the leaves that was the one that I went outside to make sure that I had all the color right okay so there's only one difference okay it's hanging there and then I'm going to go in with my sap green and pull that color out okay now I clean the brush do the same thing and then a clean brush and just try to pull the color out now with this droplet it does have a little bit of circling effect as I uh, go out and observe so I'm trying to you know paint it as a circle you know uh, uh, the green as a circle in there okay and still we need to use, leave this highlight right there okay we need to leave that oh okay but on this side we I'm going in with some indigo and darken this area because this is where our highlight is okay now because um, this uh, droplet is hanging right it's just hanging there so there is no um, there is no casting shadow to anywhere okay because you don't want uh, something to cast a shadow on the atmosphere okay that will kind of you know hard for people to see what's uh, you know to understand what's going on okay now let's do this droplet here okay and uh, still use the number two number two brush okay let's uh and so what i'm going to pick up right here is actually quinacridone gold first okay okay so you can see that quinacridone gold quinacridone gold is actually a darker kind of yellow color okay and then i'm going to use the cadmium yellow medium okay and go right here and try to pull the color out okay 
a gradation okay just a little bit and then I will go in and this is the important part oh wow there's so much pigment in my brush that it won't wash out okay now I'm going to go get the cadmium light okay with this water droplet okay do the cadmium light and then I'm going in for a clean brush okay clean brush and just pull all these color out okay and make sure I leave a white area right there, okay? Now I'm going to let the shadow cast, and so what I'm going to use is actually quinacridone burnt orange, which is the orange kind of, I call it orange yellow, but I guess it's orange brown yellow, okay? I'm going to go over here in the bottom and let it cast a shadow right there, okay? You see that? Isn't that pretty? But I personally, it's not as pretty as the green color for me, for some reason. And so I'm just doing this one, okay? And I am uh, softening the color. Hope that I don't make a big mess over here. But if I do, then I'll try to rescue myself and you guys don't laugh at me, okay? Okay, so that's my shadow right there, okay? It casts the shadow. So does, that, does, does the water droplet look like it's standing out, right? And then you guys can see that. Now, I think that this dry really fast. I'm going to use my quinacridone burnt orange and come over here and further intense the value of the, of the water droplet, okay? Okay, you see that? And so I make it stand out. And I, I'm very tempted to use a, a, just a tag of brown, so uh, burnt umber. So I'm going to try that just on the casting shadow part, okay? Because I don't want a lot of brown color over here. Okay, just a little bit, just a little tag, okay? And uh, so we don't have that, but then, you know, now that I can see, we have put the quinacridone burn orange, it's time to put it on the leaves, okay? And uh, it's very, very simple. Just, um, you know, use your number two, I guess, the brush to pick up the quinacridone um, burn orange, okay? And then what we're gonna do is just uh, make the make the color in the middle a little bit darker okay you see that and then over here the same thing okay now there's a little bit more pigment over here so I'm just gonna come in and soften it soften it with a little bit of water and a clean brush okay and just pull the color out okay no change still quinacridone burn orange okay and so it just uh, it just look prettier and make the flower look more true to nature. Okay, I can't wait to go and uh, to the LDS Temple in uh, in American Fork to do to film. Hopefully, maybe my daughter will come with me if she had nothing to do. Um, it is uh, kind of fun to go over there and just sit or I just or I can find. Uh, I'm sure that there's uh, Black Eyed Susan everywhere. But I just like to do that because I like the process of uh, the process of art making in the reverse style because we already done this one. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna add a little bit over there. Okay, and when we put the green, um, a little bit of a green background is it will also bring out the flower too. Okay. The color of the flower. You know, flower is very pretty right now, right? But um, the color of the yellow is kind of mild. Well, actually, it's not. I wouldn't call that mild, actually. You know, with this, but uh, it's kind of light. Let's let's call it that way. And uh, when we uh, go in with the with a background of uh, green, it will actually make the flower pop. And so it is important to have a little bit of a background. That's how we decide, right? And so. At, as this petal at the back, it doesn't, you know, you can't see the beginning part, so you can have uh, the quinacridone burnt orange there, but just a little bit, okay? And we can use this burnt orange to intensify the middle part or to actually separate petals too. It's very nice, okay? So now I'm using that to separate this petal from that one. Okay, I can do that, and then straight away we get the the petal all separated. Okay, okay. 
Now, um, let's do this this little guy right here, okay? Uh, which is the butt, the uh, little butt over here. No, I have uh, this all in uh, in uh, in uh, cadmium yellow. I th I think it's medium or light. Maybe it's light. And uh, so now all we need to do is to get some. Uh, Perlene green, maybe mix it up with a little bit of sap green. Wow, the sap green is uh, very watery. <laughs> I am having a hard time over here <laughs> trying to deal with the sap green. Okay, so I'm picking that up and uh, okay, let's see. Okay, so my my brush, I don't know if you can see, is actually loaded with green. Okay, and so what I'm doing is um, I'm coming in actually separating, separating the individual petals even though they're just babies over here, right? Because they're just a butt, they're just babies. And so, but uh, we still, you know, that's what we do, right? And now you can see petals. It's not just one glob of green, okay? Uh, I mean, one glob of yellow, okay? It's not just one glob of yellow, okay? And so the, the, um, the brush need to have a very fine tip, okay? so that you can just um, add area you can just like kind of flick it like that okay it's very important to me to have fine brush okay okay look at that and now you can see that that is a butt that has not a, but the lines are sharp, right? And so I'm just using a clean brush again, okay? And come in here and just ever so slightly soften it. Don't soften it too much, okay? Just ever so slightly soften it. There was a little bit too much water in there, so, okay. So the butt is uh, looking like it's just uh, going like this and ready to bloom, right? Okay, and so, um, we are pretty much uh, done, but uh, let's uh, go ahead and do the background first before we... Um, I have a leaf over here and some leaf over there, so I'm going to uh, go back to my flow brush and then um, I'm going to... I'm keeping the time. Okay, I think I'm doing well with time and uh, I'm going to uh, do some of the supporting leaf, but they're not... Um, they're not the focal point, so this is the part where we're gonna do it light and happy and uh, not even worry about, um, you know, the. it's almost like playing this part, okay? What we're doing, we're just, um, so what I did is I have some perlene green and uh, and um, a mix there, perlene green and sap green mix, and now I'm uh, getting some uh, indigo and drop it in there, okay? Just to make it pretty a little bit, okay? And so, you know, as with all buds, we know that there's some supporting leaves just right next to it. And so what I'm doing is just suggesting that, okay? Suggesting that. Okay, do you see that? And then I say, oh, I might want a little bit more indigo in the base part of this, just to make it a little bit darker. Okay, so that's what I did. Okay, isn't that pretty? Isn't that fun? Okay, and then I, I had decided to have a leaf there. And so same, I'm going in with the perline, okay? And this uh, leaf is just a very um, abstract style, loose style, okay? Now I find that that is a little, little bit uh, too light. And then look at me, I'm just dropping a bunch of indigo there, okay? A bunch of colors, so to separate this leaf from that one, right? but it is necessary to have a green there and so I'm going to not a lot I don't want to destroy that pretty leaves you know so just be a little bit careful when you are uh, you know painting and budding against each other okay okay so there's a leaf and then there should be leaves uh, here and there so that's why I'm going in just um, you know because um, you know that um, right next to the flower with uh, Black Eyed Susan, it doesn't have it doesn't have a lot of um, uh, leaves. But then you know the plant is so 
massive, right? It's a massive plant, and so you can just see leaves everywhere. So you don't have to actually worry about not true to the nature. You know, where does this leaf come from? Or why is it going that way? Because, you know, it is just a big, massive amount of leaf, you know, with Black Eye Susan. And uh, it makes them very pretty because, um, like the Chinese always say, you know, right, with uh, flowers, you need to have uh, leaves to bring out the color of the flowers. The leaves um, are actually, um, what do you call that? The leaves actually is actually a relief for the eyes. That's why I always say our maker, our God is an artist, right? He know that. He gives us all these beautiful things everywhere to look at. You know, somebody's an artist up there that know how to do that, okay? That know how to make things even prettier than they are. Even prettier than just a flower. They put leaves there, okay? And so, now, um, I don't want the leaf to be coming from nowhere, so I'm, I might go in here, right there, to just make sure that it has a base. <laughs> you know, instead of just flo floating in mid-air, mid right? I don't like that. Okay. Now, so we are actually going to do a little bit of background. So what background does is we are, no, let, let's just do that. Okay, so we let, let's just uh, finish up our our um, our little um, water droplet. Okay, so I'm bringing in my very very um, detail zero uh, the yeah Princeton Aqua Elite uh, number zero. Okay, and this is a titanium white. It's a it's a gouache. It's a permanent white color. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is like, um, I'm going to use that. I, I would dip my hand actually into the gouache. I mean, dip my, not my hand, my paintbrush and just take it straight out, okay? Off the tube because I'm not going to dirty it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint that on. Now, if you don't have gouache, you can also use acrylic, okay? Now, if you um, are very uh, seasoned artist and you want to um, leave that space, you totally can leave the highlight. Okay, and so there's usually a long highlight that go with the curve of the droplet, and then a little highlight on the side. Okay, that's how they look like. And I went out and uh, check, and that was it. Okay, now. The highlight wouldn't be under right under the leaf over here, okay? So when I went out, I find out that the highlight is actually on the side. Okay? And then you can put some on this side. If it is um if it is what I call a dangling water drop. <laughs> that is a dangling water drop, okay? So we continue to do that. I'm going to dip more. So and put a highlight right there, okay? It's going along with the shape of the, of the, going along with the shape of the water droplet, okay? And then one over here, a smaller one over there, okay? Now, isn't that pretty? Doesn't that look like that water droplet is about to pop out of the page? Okay, the same go over here. You go with the shape of the, go with the shape of the water droplet, and then one on the side, okay? And then we have this last one, the same thing. And then one shape on the side. Are those fun? Now, if you guys want to populate your painting with a lot of water droplet, uh, you can do that too, okay? Just uh, do whatever you like and uh, you'll be fine. But uh, like I say, I tried to do the first one when I was practicing with a lot of water droplet. I will show you, I actually can reach it. You know, this is my practice, okay? And I didn't like that. I think it's a little too busy for me. And so I decided to just put one on this flower and then just put uh, the rest on the leaf, okay? Now, so now we need a lot of water. I can actually use um, a bigger brush. Maybe I will. Huh. Let's do a break brush, okay? I'm going to use this one. I think I talked about this with you. It's called Dugato. Um, it's uh, kind of, you know, in Amazon, you can uh, <laughs> you can get things from different company, right? And so one day I, at Christmas time, I just told my daughter, if you want to, I need a, I need a brush that takes a lot of water. If you want to just get that for me for Christmas, and she did. And so I like it. I like it for background. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I will show you a little bit background here and then I'm going to 
Let's see how I'm with time. A little bit of background and then I'm going to splash some droplet, uh, uh, some splash on it. And then, uh, and then it will be done. Isn't that fun? I hope this is not too long, but I'm not sure at this point how long this is. Okay, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with uh, a lot of green color and indigo color. Just show that, just so that I can, uh, you know, bring out the beauty of the, bring out the beauty of the uh, Black Eyed Susan, okay? Now the petals are actually really delicate, so when we're going through here, we need to be a little bit careful, okay? And uh, make sure the, the integrity of the shape is uh, maintained, okay? And then I think I'm going in with some sap green, you know, and just uh, kind of drop color here and there, okay? That's why I always like the very pointed brush because I like I needed the point to help me when I'm doing things like that so I won't make mistake, right? And it's nice to actually have a darker color going, uh, darker green color going next to the water droplet too. It kind of bring out the water droplet a little bit also, okay? I don't like that area the way it looks, so I come in here and do it really fast, right? Fastly, so that you know the the uh, indigo did not decide to just settle down and go to sleep and stay forever, you know. <laughs> yeah, we work with our watercolor. We do the best that we can, okay? And so I'm going to go uh, through everywhere. And I start doing that and I will show you a little bit, um, just a little bit with me, okay? And then I will uh, say goodbye. And next year, when the season comes, we will do more uh, Black Eyed Susan, I'm sure we will. But this is what we have for this year. But I will do a, I will do a sketching with you guys, okay? When the time is right, okay, I will go in and do a sketching. I will go to uh, American Fork and uh, hopefully if they have it or go down actually to BYU. I think BYU also like Black Eye Susan. It's one of their favorite um, flower, okay. Now I'm going in here. Now you can see I just left this color for not very long and it's already it doesn't want to move. Okay, so when you have color that do that, you know that that's what they call sedimentary, okay. So there's some sediments on it to keep them from, you know, to just make them want it to relax and stay for life, okay? And if that's not the effect that you want, then you need to, uh, then we need to try to work with it quickly, okay? And I promise you that as you practice a lot, um, you will be able to work with things like that. You won't, it won't be such a, what you call an annoyance to you, okay? It will actually become, um, you know, as you use, um, as you're more used to it, it will kind of become your friend, if that makes sense, okay? Now I got some green over there, so I'm just gonna bring that into the flower. So it look cleaner, okay? Doesn't bother me, okay? So I'm just gonna go around and uh, put some more background and then sp splash some color on it and try not to get it on the highlight so we preserve that and let you guys see the uh, finishing uh, the finishing painting in the in the intro part, okay? But anyway, thank you so much for um, coming to join me and paint along with me. I hope you have a lot of fun um, doing this together and um, and I hope you will Remember to subscribe to my channel and leave me comment if you like, okay? If you feel like you wanted to do that, because I always really love to hear from you guys. Okay, but no pressure. But uh, just saying hi to me make me happy. And anyway, and all of your lovely comment, I just love that. And uh, so I will talk to you guys soon. And uh, we'll see you later, okay? Bye-bye.